Uh, Vice Admiral, um, there's been a lot of strong language from China this week again, although thankfully there have not been any run-ins as far as we know in the West Philippine Sea. So just yesterday we were reporting that China says it will crush any foreign incursions in the South China Sea, not just WPS. Uh, this was said by a senior military official named General He Lei at a uh, defense forum in Beijing. And as I said, I believe this is one of the strongest language yet we've heard from China. What did you make of it? Actually, while the wordings uh, were quite stronger this time, they were no different from the different uh, from the past uh, narratives that they had before. Uh, to us, while we do not uh, consider them right, but we do not also consider them uh, 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 strong enough. But simply, para uh, sa they are all uh, they are. They were meant to be general. The message was general. And the target audience there are actually are the, their internal audience. Because the, the international community, the like-minded nations, nobody buys, no? No, no, nobody buys their uh, narrative. Mm. So um, again, as, as, as I was saying, there's nothing new uh, to their recent uh, pronouncement. In fact, uh, it's so general. They say foreign forces and things like that, and no specific mention to the Philippines. Do I take it to mean then that you're not worried about it? Um, no, actually, we're not worried about it. Okay. To be what, honest. What What is uh, maybe concerning to some people or some sectors, Vice Admiral, is uh, the increased presence of uh, Chinese ships, combination of CCG, uh, maritime militia, and PLA Navy vessels. This time around, the Escoda Shoal. What do you make of uh, parang you know palipat lipat yung uh, hot spots in in the disputed waters? Um, are we kind of cautious about that at least? Well, the the, the position of our government, you know. Uh, is that we exercise sovereignty, mm -hmm. we exercise uh, so our sovereign rights and jurisdiction over all areas mm -hmm. within our within the 200 nautical mile exclusive economic zone. Not only Skoda, not only Ayungin, but the whole entire West Philippine Sea that's uh, within our 200 nautical ex exclusive economic zone. The Chinese are the ones that are staying there and uh, doing things illegal, no? Because we we anchor our position on international law, the own clause, and of course the 2016 arbiter ruling. It clearly states and and it debunked the ridiculous claim of the historical claim. There's no such thing in in in, in own clause. Uh, they only made it up. They came up with a domestic law. But again, no, if you will look at the UNCLOS, uh, China is very, very far. The, the, the nearest province that they have is more than 500 nautical miles. And Tayo, uh, we practically uh, are embracing the, the 200 nautical mile exclusive economic zone, very, very near to us. Mm. So that, that, uh, that, that, that's where we claim, uh, we lay our claim. But they don't recognize that. And uh, of course, after what happened in Mischief Reef, in Subi Reef, in Scarborough Shoal, um, medyo nakakatakot rin po, Vice Admiral, no? na baka magyari ulit ito dito naman ngayon sa Escoda Shoal. We understand that uh, under the bilateral consultation mechanism, na pag-uusapan na, and we have been discussing uh, at least Ayungin or Second Thomas Shoal, but uh, not yet Escoda. It has not extended to that. So what's the plan when it comes to Escoda? Because nabangga na po or binunggu na po nila yung BRP Teresa Magbanoa, the Coast Guard ship that has been anchored there since April. Yeah, uh, well, the, the, the challenge is very real, no? Because uh, to, to, to the Chinese, kanila yun. But again, uh, yung kanilang claim is based on on fantasy, I should, I should say that, no? And tayo naman, it's real. Again, I, I, I was saying a while ago, we base it on uh, clear international law, on clause in the 26 arbitral ruling, and and uh, they want to to control the whole area because believing that the area is theirs, so we can understand. But it's like no? So, but again, the position of our government, we will not uh, abandon any or even a square inch uh, 
of our territory to even a powerful or uh, you know a powerful nation mm. so that's that's our that's our stand the challenge is there uh, we we do un, we, we do uh, consider that and uh, ito mga pagbabangga bangga nito uh, uh, this is very real no uh, nakakainis nakaka nakakagigil nakaka nakakainig but then again we will we will stand our ground we will stand our ground hindi tayo uh, uh, magbabuckle down to their to their aggressive behaviors uh, as long as the the community international community is backing on us actually nagpapasalamat uh, tayo sa kanilang mga statements statements of support no and they believe in our in our case in our cause pero do we have enough capacity no to kind of uh, para sementuhin no yung mga sinabi ninyo na ito yung posisyon natin kasi kahit may posisyon tayo vice admiral eh kung wala naman po tayong gamit at kapasidad ano pong yung mag, ano po yung magyayari do we have a plan on how to address that kasi ang hirap naman po labanan uh, no kung ang lahat ng assets ng China Yeah that, definitely definitely but in so far as we are concerned uh, we treat the West Philippine Sea Uh, it's not the be all and end all of our relationship with china so we tr we 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 do uh, try to consider that in isolation it's not an isolated case but uh, sibihin we will address the west philippine sea security issue doon lang sa west philippine sea you no know? we will not try to do other things that would affect our uh, our relationship with other relationship with you know, uh, with with china kasi we um What we do not want to to happen is, you know, to have a situation that would escalate more, and uh, uh, God forbid, it would result to a shooting war between both countries, our assets in the area. Yun ang ating yun ang hindi natin na uh, gusto hin mong yare, hmm. because nobody uh, will benefit from such a situation. It is not to the best interest of our country. It's not to the best interest uh, also of, of China and even to the rest of the region. Mm -hmm. If if the situation will further uh, will go further into a shooting war. Mm -hmm. All right, Vice Admiral. Well, China also warned that um, developing new EDCA sites uh, could possibly drag the Philippines no uh, into the Taiwan issue. They said. Um, This could potentially be um, used to interfere in the conflict nga, um, with Taiwan. Uh, can we get your thoughts on this and how does the NMC uh, yeah. plan to uh, clarify the purpose of these EDCA sites? Let me just uh, qualify that uh, that report came mm -hmm. from the Manila Standard citing mm -hmm. a Chinese embassy official. That report did not come from us. We're just picking it up off the newspapers. Well, I, I I really do not have the specifics now, but the EDSA site, Ed, 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 Ed sites, in fact, when I was still in the service, they were meant to be uh, put up, especially during ano yun, eh, mga uh, situations, uh, humanitarian uh, missions, and all these things. No? And, and, and these sites actually are being used for training purposes. And uh, again, uh, if you may direct the questions to the, to the defense department because they have more uh, more to uh, qualify on on the purpose of the edca sites because yeah. so at the, the, the national maritime council we try to come up with policies we try to come up with coherent strategy towards our maritime areas and maritime domains so mm. basically that's the purpose of the maritime council it is composed of the different agencies that have a uh, stake in our maritime domain. Yeah. Uh, coming back to the West Philippine Sea, Vi uh, Vice Admiral, um, whatever happened to China's threat to detain supposed trespassers? That was a self-imposed rule that they announced a few months ago. Do we know if uh, there's been any incidents? Effective June 15th. Uh, yeah, uh, oh. yeah. <laughs> Actually, so I, I, I was mentioning a while ago. <laughs> The, the they came up with that threat again no new mm. narrative na yun, that they will be apprehending because mm. they came up with a, a domestic law coast guard law that would allow their coast guard assets to apprehend trespassers but then again no wala silang karapatan mag mag uh, maghuli man nung kung sino man nung mapapilipinas mapapietnamese whatever no because they're not the area is not theirs 
Oh, well, fortunately, wala pang nangyayaring ganang hulihan. Again, pananakot. Uh, they, they're trying to intimidate uh, uh, um, seagoing fairs para huwag mag, 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 mag-isda doon, huwag gumawa ng any maritime activity there. Again, it's intimidation coming from their part. And yeah. it's uh, it's uh, unfortunate, no? Uh, hindi maganda, no? Hindi karapat dapat na gawin nila yun. Yeah. Okay. And as far as we are concerned, we have not scaled back operations or activities you know, in light of that threat to arrest no, trespassers? No, no, okay. in, in, in fact, all our maritime activities are still be, uh, being done according to our schedules, according to our plans. So we will not be uh, uh, changing programs just because of those threats. We will continue to be doing our, our activities uh-huh. at the West Philippine Sea. Of course, there are, may, may rin din kaming ano, no? How oh, ayo naman pag medyo uh, babanggay na or huhuli and we try to advise our and not not to proceed no para lang for the safety on 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 our part naman mm. okay colonel balikan ko lang ay sorry vice admiral balikan ko lang yung sinabi mo ulit oh, because it seems that the national maritime council is putting emphasis no that uh, the our relationship with China, it's not just what's going on in the West Philippine Sea, but it's beyond that. Can you uh, explain that further to us, no? just to put our relationship with China into context? Because tensions are very high right now. What exactly do you mean by that? So what other, uh, are there areas of cooperation, more areas of, co- of cooperation as opposed to areas of tension? What does the NMC mean by that? Yes, okay. yes, 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 de- definitely. No? Uh, for example, uh, in in the in the light of the Pogo incidents, our relations with China, I mean, the, the Chinese embassy here and the Chinese uh, police are actually cooperating. They are the kaya nga maraming ano, maraming na, na, na huhuli because of their cooperation also. That's why, kung kung the dispute will go beyond the West Philippine Sea, you know, con- in context, maapektohan yung ano eh, maapektohan yung ibang relationship natin with China. There is also trade, there is also tourism, uh, in other in other activities of government. So, wag nating ano, wag nating isama yon just because of, or, or, of course the focus is there, no. Papi ko na mas nakakaginig itong sa West Philippines, but then again, uh as I've said a while ago, it's not the be all and end all relationship of our government with the government of China. Is the uh, Nar- National Maritime Council prepared for uh, the possibility of a radical change in U.S. foreign policy in case former President Donald Trump gets elected again? I mean, the assumption here is that if it's Kamala Harris, more or less similar uh, foreign policy approach as President Joe Biden. But if it's Trump again, the analysts have told us that it's, it's going to be a lot more transactional. Uh, he may not invest so much in this region. Is that something that the M- M- NMC is looking into? Uh, actually, it's not the NMC, but more on it's mm. the turf of our Department of Foreign Affairs. Mm. So actually, they're, start, they're trying to study that, and of course, it will have a a. Uh, meron ding pagkakaiba siguro in in terms of the defense, whatever. No? But still, wait and see. But definitely, our foreign affairs and our de- uh, defense department are looking into it. And if ever there will be any changes, uh, they'll be studying it very carefully. Mm. But actually, the NMC is a collegiate body, right? In- mm-hmm. Which includes DFA, uh, mm-hmm. practically every major government agency, mm-hmm. DND, DOE, National Security Council, even DILG is in there, I believe. So, I mean, um, give us a sense of uh, how difficult is it, or maybe it's not so difficult, for, for the group to reach a consensus when it comes to decisions that need to be made over the West Philippine Sea. Yes, uh, that's why all the different agencies of government, departments of uh, our uh, government that has a stake in the West Philippine Sea, not actually in the West Philippine Sea, in all, all our maritime domain, Mapa South, Mapa East and West, and even just in, in the North. So basically, it's a policy-making body. We try to come up with uh, studies on, on uh, activities affecting our maritime domain, and they will be coming up with technical reports, studying it, and coming up with recommendations to the president on, on a matter of policy. Mm-hmm. So, pag nagkaroon na lang magandang study, and, and all the other uh, council members will agree on a particular option or how to go about it, and how to address a particular challenge, then this is the basically the, the job of the NMC. Mm-hmm. We will try to come up with activities 
we will try to have a, a coherent, uh, cohesive approach to a particular issue or particular problem. Yeah, but is it not difficult with so many agencies at the table? It's a, well, it is difficult. They have competing interests. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. have competing uh, interests, right? So, you yeah, know. yeah, definitely. Sometimes, because if, for example, the the issue is more on fishing, for example, mm. so we will let the Department of Agriculture come up with its own, and then all the other council members will try to give their comments, and other agencies will also try to come up with maybe technical information. And if it's for, uh, for example, uh, I was before a, a, a USEC in the Department of Energy. When, when it, an issue is heavy on uh, energy, then the Department of Energy comes up with its uh, study uh, proposals, recommendations, and all the other agencies of government will try to come up with their own, uh, what are their take on it, what are their thoughts on it, and maybe come up with a better approach and fine tune whatever the Department of Energy comes up with. Okay. Wow. Very, very quickly, very like, I'm, I'm, I'm really curious because uh, recently, no, Vice Admiral, medyo ni retool yung definition and yung mandato ng NMC. Um, I'm just curious, syempre, ang laman ng utak natin laging top of mind, West Philippine Sea, pero marami, in Maritime Council, it goes around the whole archipelago. Um, ano po ba ang uh, top on your agenda bukod sa West Philippine Sea? Uh, I would like to give uh, no, just a short background and context. Because the, if you are aware of the National Task Force on the West Philippine Sea, right? Mm -hmm. Before, uh, the, council, the National Maritime Council used to be the National Coast Watch Council. Mm -hmm. But uh, when, when the administration of President Marcos Jr. Uh, uh, came in, pinag-aralan nila parang may duplication ata yung National uh, Task Force on the West Philippine Sea and the National Coast Watch Council. Mm -hmm. Because basically, the members of the task force are also the members of the council. Mm. And then even their mandate are parang nag-duplicate. Na, na, so, uh, to have a better framework of governance, they, they made it a point na inilialim na lang yung National Task Force of West Philippine Sea. Basically, it will be the operating arm of the council. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, that made it more, you know, more uh, relevant and more, you know, uh, more cohesion between the parang hindi na magbabanggaan yung dalawang uh, body uh, because before they are the, the council and the task force are all directly reporting to the president now uh, pag pag isa hen na yon and then uh, we're coming up with more cohesive more relevant and more significant approaches to whatever uh, challenges at the west at, at the maritime domain okay Salamat. well we look forward to being in touch with you again over um well, if and when other issues come up related to the Maritime Council. Thanks for so much for joining us tonight, retired if I may, if vice. I may, yes, go ahead, well, please. Cl closing, yeah. Yes. I, I'd just like to, you know, gusto ko manawagan sa ating mga kababayan, those who especially listening, that uh, the, the challenge of the West Philippine Sea is, is big, no? And, and uh, we need to have uh, our people rally behind the government. The, the government is very clear that uh, kahit ano mangyari, we will not abandon any square inch of our territory, even to a foreign power. No, That's why we want, we, we ask, we request, we plead to our people, to our, to our countrymen, to rally behind the, the flag. Mm -hmm. Tayo ang dehado dito eh. Ang nangyayari kasi, there are even some, some Filipinos who are trying to, you know, um, uh, advocate or oh, like sila pa yung nagnano nag, nag, ng narrative ng, no, ng kabila. Instead of our narrative being espoused, yung kabilang narrative pa yung uh, inaano nila. And they're even trying to say, oh, mali yung ginagawa ng Pilipinas, you know. Uh, let's, let's, let's rally behind our flag. Tayo yung Pilipino, magkaisa tayo. And uh, if we come up with a national will, I think uh, we will beat any adversary. You're right. There are a lot of uh, there's a lot of debate raging yeah. online, but that's a really nice way of putting it. Uh, thanks so much for that closing note. Retired Vice Admiral Alex Lopez, spokesperson of the National Maritime Council. Thanks for your time tonight.